Trevor Shady, and today we're going to take a look at something called the breaking board paradox. Now this experiment's been around for quite a while. I've seen a few people try and reproduce it. In fact, there's companies that are selling the materials to replicate it, but the results I'm seeing just aren't what they should be. So I have a few slabs of wood here, some paper. We're going to give it a try and see if we can get better results. So let's take a closer look. Now we're going to try a few variations, but all the wood is 3 16th inch thick. I have one inch wide, one and a half inch, two and a half inch, three and a half inch, and a couple sheets of newspaper. Now the start of this experiment is to take one of these slabs of wood and put it on the edge of the table, and what I want to try and do is break it. I want to hit it hard and fast, but as you can imagine, if I hit this thing, most likely it's simply going to fly across the room. Well, actually let's give that a try. And it didn't break. Well, that certainly didn't work. So we're going to try it again. Uh, check the board. It's not cracked or broken anywhere. So once again, I'll lay it down on the table, flat on the table. And this time we're going to take a sheet of newspaper, which is 24 inches by 22 inches. We're simply going to lay it flat on that board, spread it out, and paper's on top of it. Now I'll hit it once again. And let's see what happens. Ready? The paper didn't move. And yet, the board broke. I bet we could even do it with this board again. Let's try it once more. <laughs> okay. Once again, paper's on top. I hit the board right here as hard and fast as I can. Ready? One, two, three. And the paper doesn't move. Now to explain this, we started out with the same wood slab. Now this wood is very light, it doesn't have much inertia. So when I hit this, it's easy to get it to rotate. And obviously, paper doesn't have much mass either. In fact, if I were to take this paper and crumple it up, I'm adding very little mass to the piece of wood. So if I hit it, it still flies across the room without breaking the wood. So obviously, putting the paper on top must be doing something other than just simply adding mass to it. The original explanation for this demonstration claims that since air applies 14.7 pounds per square inch of pressure against every surface, and there's 528 square inches on this paper, then there must be over 7,762 pounds applied to hold that board down. Now obviously we're not going to feel over 7,000 pounds here, the paper is simply too flimsy. But if I try and move this paper quickly, I can feel that air pressure pushing down, restricting its movement. Now it's acting kind of like this plunger. The air is pushing it down, holding it in place. Now I don't think it's a pressure on all the paper, I think it's primarily around where the board is. And as long as that paper is keeping air from getting underneath the board, then it's going to apply enough force down against it so that if I do this quickly, I can break the board. Now we've been using wood that's two and a half inches wide. Let's try a piece that's only an inch and a half wide. Once again, I'll lay a piece of paper on top of it, a small piece of it hanging over the edge, and I'll hit it as hard and fast as I can. And let's see if we can get this to break without moving the paper. One, two, three. It simply doesn't give us the same results. Yes, the board broke, but the paper and the board flew across the room. Let's see what happens on this one. One, two, three. Now it has some even thinner boards, in this case they're one inch. Let's see what happens with these. Put the paper out. Here we go, I think we're ready. One, two, three. Let's try that one inch again. And it moves. We got a lot of movement with this thin piece, so let's try a wider piece. In this case, it's three and a half inches wide. Spread the paper out. There we go. All right, one, two, three. 
Well, that one didn't move either. Let's try another three and a half inch board. Put it on the paper, get it nice and flat. There we go. One, two, three. That is amazing. Let's try the broken piece. <laughs> well, it looks like we get better results with a wider board than we do with a narrow board. Even though this board takes a little bit more effort to break it, when I put the paper on top and I push, I can feel a lot of air resistance against this board and hardly any against this one. So I really think it's the air resistance against the board more so than the air resistance against the paper by itself. So anyway, this is our breaking board paradox. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, come back and see me again. Okay, bye.